This is underground television. You're watching Bedrock TV. All right, all right, all right, all right. How's it doing, internet, everybody? Welcome to Bedrock TV. You know how it goes. I'm Cameron Phillips, your host. Burning up a little bit because uh, my guest for the day. Sure. <laughs> Not only is he a hot guy, but uh, I rode my bike to get here. You know how it is trying to be all green and stuff today. And LA doesn't necessarily help you out with that. So rode my bike, took the red line. I'm now in Hollywood proper, in the thick of it, with a brilliant young gentleman who's just got oozing with talent. And, and, and style, I have to say, dude. You're just out of hand with your style. Stevie Boy. You have a beer. Yes, I do. That's kind of the why I make the big bucks. Yeah, that's kind of good. Here, relax and let me relax. I love it. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> but I wasn't kidding, man. I rode my bike down here, and I love public transportation. I'm all about it. But the city really has to help it, help us out a little bit more. You've lived in Europe, I'm told. I've lived in Europe 16 years or so. Oh, wow, that's great. Yeah, so you really get used to another way of just doing things. Just doing things so exactly. So I'm right. happy, proud, cheers to be here in the United States making a show and being in Hollywood getting a chance to meet cats like this guy, Stevie Boy, but I do miss Europe. What about you? I definitely miss Europe. It's, like, it's very open-minded, it's free, it's just it's very accepting to uh, different culture, different races. It, mm -hmm. There, I didn't really experience any type of racial tensions or issues or um, fashion tensions or issues or anything. You know, I never experienced those type of problems in Europe. My favorite thing about Europe, honestly, was the culture. You sure. Know, the, the, the dedication to culture and religion, they really stick no, with it and stand strong behind their beliefs. And I love that about them. Not that America doesn't, but yeah. and they're definitely different in the how they do it. Different. I like it because like, you'll know when you're in Germany compared to when you're in London or when you're in Paris. Yeah, it's absolutely. Like, it's like, it's so different. Not just the language, but uh, uh, well, all that goes along with it. So, right. you know, the food. You know, just the everyone's way the a people... family in that city. What do they call it? City state? Everyone's a out there. Everyone's a family in that yeah. particular country or continent. It's so interesting. Sure, man. Here's crazy. <laughs> yeah, and they, they have a, they, they got their own story. So when you when you talk about racism, because you know we're both black guys, and we know the story over here. Right. right. But you know they've got their own trip. So when you go there as a, as a black or, or a black, let's say a non-white person. I don't know, you definitely get a different vibe, but it's definitely not a story from this country. So, you know, I think a lot of the black folks that they know, quite frankly, are Africans. Mm -hmm. So they've got a whole different type of right. history together. And it's just, it's, it's cooler than ours, I guess, right. here today. Okay, so we know you are European at heart somehow. I am. So, so where are you living now? I live in Baltimore and in New York. I live in both places. But I have a lot in Baltimore that I do all my work. Yeah. I'm um, looking to relocate eventually soon. I'm not exactly sure where because now my company, I'm trying to take it to a bigger, bigger meeting, you know, bigger this, bigger that. I'm actually yeah. switching over to luxury. So that's what I'm currently working on right now. It's a big dedication. Okay, so as you can imagine, doing a rock show, we don't come across Design. designers that often. Definitely sometimes, but it's not, you know, this is a highlight for our, for our viewers. You are definitely a highlight. So I'm going to ask questions that might seem fundamental and stupid. That's fine. But, I like fundamental you know, I, I think that uh, a lot of rock cats don't really get it. Fashion plays a huge role in rock and roll. It always has. I mean, but I'm, I'm a designer that designs for the people that you like. So, <laughs> yeah. you know, it's interesting. I mean, a lot of people may bypass the fact that, oh, this is just a designer. You got to keep in mind that it also helps visually, like the artists even more. Sure. If everybody was performing naked, I'm sure you would not know whose music you were fucking liking. Trust me, the image helps. It definitely does. Well, it's a huge factor. It I know that. It's a huge factor. Now, I do know that some people are down with that and some people aren't. So, right. I'm, a, I'm a purist, I'm old school. So, first and foremost, I want my rock stars to rock. Right. First and foremost. And I, I noticed today a lot of new artists, and particularly successful, far more than I've ever been and may ever be, they don't rock, but they're all about image, image and look. So, right. how do you, what's, your, what's your feeling about that as a designer? Um, well, image definitely will get you. You know, I mean, just look at David Bowie back in the day. Yeah. His image pushed him to bigger heights. 
um, the Beatles, how they turned wearing a suit to the thing there. Um, simple things like that. Everyone had distinctive images. Sure. Um, but the image, the images is what made people more interested. Like, you know, sadly now, before you used to have the talent to get you out there. Now you don't have to have the talent. You have to have the image. It is what it is. You just Steve have to roll with it. Nailed it on the head, man. You have to roll with it. You do have to roll with it. So, okay, you take an old guy like me. Okay. What should I do to make myself more appealing on that fashion tip? Um, I'm a guy, you get on stage, you know, I'd be having a pair of jeans and nothing else. You know what I mean? But that doesn't work. So what you need more. So what could I do, for example? You know, usually being um, abstract or being um, abstract action, sorry. And uh, standing out from others, you know, it's something that you naturally are, have to be comfortable and willing to do. Mm -hmm. It's not something that you do just to get attention. Okay. But, you know, a suit and a tie, probably like a suit and a tie, is, it's cute. It looks great. But to have a suit and a tie with spikes, on the shoulders, that takes it that extra step. Right on. So the band I'm playing with, which is called Elegant Friction, three-piece band, traditional, we rock. Bass, yeah. drums, guitar, girl singer, plays and plays bass. We don't really have a sure fashion or sure style yet, so what we're doing is, <laughs> quite frankly, we're all wearing black and just busting the shit out when we get up there. So it comes across, but I know that we could do something maybe even, even cooler. So. I'm going to invite you to take a look at our website sometime, I will. and I'll follow up with you guys, and we'll find out what Stevie Boy says, what this band, Elegant Friction, could, could actually do. Just, just be fucking cooler at the end of the day. Nice, man. I have a broad imagination. I mean, all I have to do is basically like listen to someone's music mm -hmm. without even seeing who they are, and physically in person, or just visually, and I can definitely put an image to it. Cool. It's really simple. All it is is just your imagination. Now you, of course, you get paid for that normally. I would imagine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is the nature of a job, of the job. So, do you work as a stylist? I do. Okay. As a stylist and a designer. You know, I started off with. I started off. Technically, I was doing music. Mm -hmm. Technically, I was doing music. I had a lot of great offers and big deals, and, uh, but I was very, I was underage. I just turned 21 this year. Okay. And um, I was underage. I think it was, I think it was about 17, 18 when I first got my first record label deal. My mom would let me do it. So I didn't push away from music. I just couldn't do it. I was living under my mom's, mom's um, house. Mom's rules. house, mom's rules. Right. And my mom was in the military for 30 years. So you get the idea. And um, <laughs> I'm probably too, but for 30 years, that's 60 years combined. Okay. Mentally, it's challenging. But <laughs> they. So you had to break out one way or another. I did. I moved out of my mom's house when I was 18. Mm -hmm. And um, it broke her heart, but now she's proud of me. But, sure. Yeah. And then I got into other things such as modeling. And then I became a photographer and I became a designer. Right on. And now I'm a designer now in terms of stylist slash designer. And that's what I'm working on right now. You know, revamping people's images. Mm -hmm. You know, people that inspired me. Sure. You know, um, from back in the day. I'm, I like to work with people back in the day, not necessarily with these hot now. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I understand that's what keeps you relevant. But to get my kindred spirit satisfied, I like to work with the people in the past. I, I appreciate yeah. who you reference because, you know, again, this is a rock format. And a lot of these kids don't probably don't know or care about maybe the, some of the artists that you work with. We'll right. learn about that shortly, I guess. But I love that you would draw from what I consider the people that have inspired me as an artist. That right. David Bowie was a classic example right. of a chameleon. And anyone who knows me for any sort of you know the last ten years or so will see a lot of changes, uh, a lot of external and sonic changes as well. So that's cool, man. You're watching Bedrock TV.